In this video we're going to have a look at forces in two dimensions, but in particular a question that involves friction. So a block of mass 2 kilograms is at rest on a rough horizontal plane, acted on by a force of magnitude 12 newtons, that's this one here, at an angle of 15 degrees upwards from the horizontal. All those details are just described in the diagram. Find the frictional component of the contact force exerted on the block by the plane. Well, the first thing we're going to do is draw all the forces on the block. So first of all, we've got the weight, which is 2G. And we've got the normal contact force, which I'm going to call R. Now, in this case, R doesn't automatically equal 2G, as it might have done in previous examples, because this tension here, this 12 newtons pulling the block up, is bearing some of the load of the weight of the block so the R is going to be somewhat reduced because of the presence of this upward component of the 12 newtons so we can't just instantly say that R equals 2G here we'll have to resolve in a little while to find out and there's a friction force as well it's a rough horizontal plane it's being held at rest it's being pulled to the right so friction moves it to the left it resists motion so find the friction uh, frictional component of the contact force exerted on the block by the plane. Well, we'll consider right to be the positive direction. We get 12 newtons, which is the force that's pulling the block. And we want the horizontal or adjacent component of that. Well, adjacent from soccer tour is cos 15. Take the friction equals 0. The reason it's zero is because it's at rest. So it's always equal to mass times acceleration. And because it's at rest, the acceleration is zero. Which means that the friction equals 12 cos 15. Which is approximately equal to, to three significant figures. 12 cos 15 equals 11.6. Newtons. <clears throat> Show that the normal component of the contact force exerted on the block by the plane has magnitude 16.5 newtons. Correct the three significant figures. So now let's consider up to be the positive direction. So all the forces pointing up. We've got R plus 12 newtons, which is this force that's pulling the block. However, this time we want the upward component the opposite component which is sine 12 sine 15 take the weight which is pointing down equals mass times acceleration which is zero because the acceleration is zero which means that r equals 2g take 12 sine 15 which is approximately equal to well, let's just check this 2 times 9.8 Take 12 sine 15 equals 16.5 newtons. So that was part two that we've just done. Part three says it's given that the block is on the point of sliding. Find the coefficient of friction between the block and the plane. So the block's on the point of sliding. That means the friction's at its maximum. And just breaking away from the question for a second, there's a common misconception that the friction equals mu r. The formula actually is F is less than or equal to mu r. And the reason for that is, just imagine yourself putting your hand on the table. If you push down, the normal reaction is going to be quite big. That means the friction is going to be massive. But if that's the case, the table should be pulling your hand forward. If there's that friction acting, that should be pulling your hand forward, but it doesn't. So that's why the formula is F is less than or equal to mu r, because you actually have to push forward for the friction to occur, and the table will resist your motion up to and including mu r. And then as soon as you start putting more than mu r into it, as soon as you start, start putting more than mu r effort into it, that's when your hand will start slipping forward. So when friction's at its maximum it's equal to mu r. When we're on the point of limiting equilibrium or the point of sliding, 
However, until then, F is less than or equal to mu R. Just a technical point there that hopefully cleared things up. So part three is given that the block is on the point of sliding. So that means friction is at its maximum. So what I like to write, instead of F equals mu R, which we've just said isn't quite correct, F max, the maximum friction, equals mu R. And at this point, we're at maximum friction because the block is on the point of sliding. So we've got that the frictional force, which we worked out in part one, is 11.6. 11 11.6 .6. 11 .6 equals mu times the normal reaction force, 16.5. Which means that the coefficient of friction is equal to 11.6 divided by 16.5. 11.6 divided by 16.5, which is equal to 0 0.703 to three significant figures. And then the force of magnitude 12 newtons is now replaced by a horizontal force of magnitude 20 newtons. The block starts to move, find the acceleration of the block. Right, so it's a whole new situation now. So we're gonna to need to start this again, new diagram, because it's a new situation. So let's draw it. We've got the block here. And let's draw all the forces acting on the block. So I've got its weight. I've got the normal reaction. I've got the friction. And we've got the, what I'm going to call the driving force now. Which instead of being 12 newtons at an angle of 15 degrees... It's going to be 20 newtons horizontally. So 20 newtons. The weight is still 2g. The friction we don't know because it's a different situation. We need to work that out. And the normal reaction. We can see it's going to be 2g because there aren't any other forces going up to oppose the 2g going down. However, let's just show that. Let's resolve vertically. So R vertically up being our positive direction. Take any forces going directly down equals mass times acceleration, which is zero since it's not accelerating up or down, which means that R equals 2G. So now we've got that, let's resolve horizontally. Now we know the friction's at a maximum because it's gone beyond the point of slipping. Friction put up its best effort, but the 20 Newtons beat it. So I'm gonna call that F max. The friction is maximum and we know that the maximum friction equals mu r. So 20 take f max equals mass times acceleration equals the mass which is 2 kilograms times the acceleration and this time we know it's accelerating at a rate greater than naught so we need to work that out. We also know f max equals mu r we worked out the value of the coefficient of friction in the previous part. So F max equals mu, which is 0 0.703, times the normal reaction, which we found out to be 2G, equals, so 0 0.703 times 2G, which is 13.7788. which means that 20 take the friction over two equals the acceleration. So showing the full calculation, 20 take, in fact, let's put the fraction button there, 20 take our previous answer over two equals the acceleration, which is 3.11. meters per second squared. So let's go back and indicate what all of our answers are now. So put boxes around them. Make the examiner aware that that's our final answer. So 11.6 newtons to part 1, 16.5 newtons to part 2, 0 0.703 and the coefficient of friction is a unitless constant so there's no units needed there and finally 3.11 meters per second squared. 
For more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, click the thumbs up at the bottom.